Jetstar. Do you like riddles? I do. That's why I'm starting this letter with one. What weighs more than a Suzuki Swift, less than a Hummer, and smells like the decaying anus of a deceased homeless man? No idea? Okay. How about what measures food portions in kilograms and has the personal hygiene of a French prostitute? Still nothing? Right. One more try. What is fat as fuck, stinks like shit, and should therefore be forced to purchase two seats on a Jetstar flight? That's right. It's the man which I sit next to, no way, under, on my flight from Perth to Sydney yesterday. As I boarded the plane, I mentally high-fived myself for paying the additional $25 for an emergency seat. I was imagining all that extra room when I suddenly was distracted by what appeared to be an infant hippopotamus located halfway down the aisle. As I got closer, I was relieved to see that it wasn't a dangerous semi-aquatic African mammal, but a morbidly obese human being. However... This relief was short-lived when I realized that my seat was located somewhere underneath him. Soon after I managed to burrow into my seat, I caught what was to be the first of numerous fetid whiffs of body odor. His scent possessed hints of blue cheese and Mumbai slum, with nuances of sweaty flesh and human feces sprayed with cologne. Oh no... Considering I was visibly under duress, I found it strange that none of the cabin crew offered me another seat. To be fair, it's entirely possible that none of them actually saw me. Perhaps this photo will jog their memories. Pinned to my seat by a fleshy boulder, I started preparing for a 127-hour-like escape. Thankfully, though, the beast moved slightly to his left, which allowed me to stand up walked to the back of the plane, and politely asked the cabin crew to be seated elsewhere. I didn't catch the names of the three flight attendants, but for the purpose of this letter, I'll call them Chatty Number One, Chatty Number Two, and Giggly. I've given them all the same surname. Could not give a shit. After my request, Chatty Number One and Chatty Number Two continued their conversation, presumably about how shit they are at their jobs. And Giggly, well, she just giggled. I then asked if I could sit in one of the six vacant seats at the back of the aircraft, to which Giggly responded, Hee, they're for cabin crew only. Hee. I think Giggly may have been suffering from some sort of mental impairment. I tried to relocate myself without the assistance of the could-not-give-a-shit triplets, but unfortunately everyone with a row to themselves was now lying down. It was then I realised that my fate was sealed. I made my way back to Jabba the Hutt and spent the remainder of the flight smothered inside boob and cellulite, taking shallow breaths to avoid noxious gas poisoning. Just before landing, I revisited the back of the plane to use the toilet. You can imagine my surprise when I saw both crew-only rows occupied by non-crew members. I can only assume Giggly let them sit there after she forgot who she was and why she's flying on a big, shiny, metal thing in the sky. Imagine going out for dinner and a movie, only to have your night ruined by a fat mess who eats half your meal and then blocks 50% of the screen. Isn't that exactly the same as having someone who can't control that calorie intake occupying half your seat on flight? Of course it is! So that's why I'm demanding a full refund of my ticket, including the $25 for an emergency row seat. I'm also looking to be compensated for the physical pain and mental suffering caused by this being enveloped in human blubber for four hours. My lower back is in agony, and I have to type this letter one-handed, as I'm yet to regain full use of my left side. And if I don't recover completely, I'll have to say goodbye to my lifelong dream of becoming Air Guitar World Champion. If that occurs, you will pay. To discuss my generous compensation package, email me at richwiskin at hotmail.com or tweet me at at richwiskin. No regards, Rich Wiskin. Update. Two days after my fat star experience, I was due to fly from Sydney to Melbourne. However, my flight was cancelled due to engineering requirements. I was scheduled to fly the next day, but that flight was also cancelled. On the third day... My flight was delayed by two hours. I received this email from Jetstar and wrote my reply on their Facebook wall. Unfortunately, they deleted it after it gathered like 200 likes in a couple of hours. 
Dear Ri Mr. Richard Wiskin, due to operational requirements, your flight from Sydney to Melbourne has been cancelled. We sincerely apologise for the disruption to your service today and the inconvenience this may have caused you. It is our intention to operate all services to schedule. However, on occasion, unforeseen issues can unfortunately cause a disruption. As a gesture of goodwill, we have um, arranged a Jetstar travel voucher to the value of 100 Australian dollars for you to redeem on future Jetstar services. Please refer to the How to Access Your Jetstar Travel Voucher section for more details to obtain this voucher. Awesome work, Jetstar. Two of my flights in the past two days have been cancelled. You're so lucky that my favourite pastime is wasting both time and money getting to and from airports. Imagine how annoyed someone who doesn't love wasting time and money would feel about this situation. Ho ho ho! Man, I'd hate to be that guy. Whilst I appreciate your email and the $100 Jetstar voucher you gave me as a gesture of goodwill, I can't help but wonder who goodwill is. Are you talking about the two-time Oscar-winning film, Goodwill Hunting? That's a good movie. I don't understand what it has to do with my flight cancellations and subsequent voucher. Perhaps you meant Goodwill. That make more sense. Maybe you could spend my $100 voucher on employing a competent copywriter with an elementary grasp of the English language. Have you seen Goodwill Hunting? Robin Williams was great, but Matt Damon really stole the show. My favourite scene takes place in a bar. I don't want to ruin it for you if in case you haven't seen it. But basically, some preppy douchebag gets schooled by Matt Damon for embarrassing his lover, Ben Affleck. If you have seen it, then you'll understand this reference. Me? Do you like apples? You? Yes. Me? Well, I'm never flying with Jetstar again. How do you like them apples? No regards, Rich Whiskin. P.S. If you're wondering what Matt Damon is calculating on the blackboard, it's how much Jetstar sucks. PPS, Matt Damon! Update. Jetstar refunded the 25 emergency seat fee and said, Jetstar does not have a specific policy in place for customers who may be considered a person of size. However, all customers must be able to safely take their seat to travel with us. Customers do have the option of choosing to purchase an additional seat for their comfort. We also publish seat specifications on our website for reference.